What's up you guys? My name is Aubrey and I'm HP and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we're going to be doing a really hopefully productive van build video. And so it is currently, what date is it? It's Saturday, August 7th and the plan is today is to dedicate the entire day to building out the van to try to get as much done as possible. So the plan is is that you guys see that the ceiling as of right now is just bare ceiling. That is going to change in today's video and we are going to be in installing these ship lap boards on the ceiling. We're also going to be installing and finishing the water shelf down below. And then we are also going to be buying the paint for the cabinets as well as the flooring for the van floor. It doesn't sound like a lot, but I predict that it will take us most of the day, especially because of the fact that it is August in Texas and yeah, it's going to be a hot one. But it's okay. We have the fan. I so. have my long sleeves to protect my skin. And I'm brown. But with that being said, you guys, let's get started because we have a lot to do. Puppy pub. So the first project that we started with for the day was the bike rack. Now this is again a dedicated, easy to use, easy to access storage option for our bikes. We're going to be using the van a lot for things like triathlons, mountain biking, and things like that. And we wanted to custom make a rack that can accommodate to our bikes and our gear. Now this is of course something that we made with our own thoughts in mind and our own needs in mind, but we do think it's something that the outdoorsy renters that rent the van will also find this useful as well. So here I am installing the slides onto the van, and then here I am carrying the one of the pieces to the bike rack to the back of the van to do a test fit. Now I'm going to quickly find out that I have actually installed this backwards. And here I am contemplating my entire existence, why I just didn't wait for HP to do this, why I was impatient, because now I have to go back and redo all of this. But you know, that is a problem for another day. So let's go back to that later. So after going in and fixing the bike rack issue, now we're moving on to the water storage shelf. Now this is a shelf that we're going to be using to store water related things. Underneath the shelf we'll store the shower bag, hose, different gear that could get wet and are associated with the water system. And then above we will hold the water tank. Now the water tank is pretty large, it's not huge, but it's going to be heavy once it's totally filled up. So we wanted to make a sturdy shelf that can actually hold the water tank and all of the plumbing that will be going to the sink. About an hour and a half later, finished the water shelf. I mean, look how... St <laughs> I'm so happy it's sturdy. So I had to do some math, which is hard. And this fully filled out 25 gallons is like something like 250 pounds worth of water, not including the actual tank itself, which is maybe five pounds or so. And we had to make sure that whatever we put on top of here is going to support the weight of that. Now, Aubrey had a good idea of reusing some of this old, uh, I think it was like three quarter inch maple uh, plywood because this pound for pound actually is very sturdy, which is why we use it up top so we can put our big butts up there and not move. So this is plenty durable. We put some extra supports on the outside to go along with the base that's screwed into the subflooring, which also had studs underneath. So this is definitely not going anywhere. And the last thing we need is going 80 miles an hour down the highway, this sloshing around and then coming unhinged and exploding a bunch of water in our vehicle. So very proud of this shelf. We're also gonna make this little storage underneath. This is Aubrey's so the, brainchild. The thought is, is we can put things like lawn chairs in here. We can put like hose, spare hoses. We can umbrellas. put the shower bag, umbrellas, things that really yeah. are like could get wet. We can put under here and then the water and all the water piping and all of that stuff is gonna go here. And then you can see the start to the bike rack. So that's where one of the hinges to the bike rack is. That way the bikes can get taken out. So all in all, I would say it took longer than I thought, but. Yeah, I feel like it took longer, but this is one of those things that this has to be done correctly because if we skimp on this or if this isn't properly secured, this entire thing could move and it could push other stuff out of the way or it could rip our walls off, you know? So I think this is 
this is a huge start. This is. And then the cool thing about these things, these uh, bike racks, is that it locks. And so when you put it in, when it doesn't go, and then now it goes. Those hinges were expensive. They were 90 each. For one side? Well, I thought that they came in a pair, but I complained to Amazon that I only got one slide. And then they resent me it, and it still only came with one slide. So we got it for free? Buy one, get one free, it seems like. And that's going in the budget. So we're gonna put a pause on the garage for now, and we are going to move on to the ceiling, and we need to install these shiplap boards into the ceiling, which sounds like it's gonna be easy, but HP is also simultaneously going to be installing his puck lights as he's shaking his head and dread. It'll be easy to a degree. I think it's just making sure everything's cut exactly the correct length and then also trying to get it where it's shaped out around the fan. It's going to be a little difficult because this is kind of scary for me. I have to have this done perfectly because my electrical, I only have one shot to get that up there. Yeah. And I can't, you know, keep taking all those boards. I can, Aubrey will yell at me, but I can't keep taking those boards up and down. So here we are installing the shiplap into the ceiling. Now we got the shiplap from Lowe's. It costs less than $100 to do the entire ceiling, which I feel like was a pretty reasonable price, especially given the fact that lumber in general is fairly expensive. And before we got these pieces of wood into the van, we did stain and seal them as well. The stain was for aesthetics and the seal was to make the boards more scratch resistant and more resistant to moisture and water as well. I don't know if that step like of the process was necessary, but we just wanted to be super cautious. And so here HP is just fitting them like a puzzle. It was very, very easy to do. I think of the entire build process so far, the shiplap was probably the easiest and also the most satisfying. It worked very, very well. Now we have not installed the ceiling insulation yet that will be going in along with the, the ceiling boards. And we're also gonna be installing the puck lights that HP mentioned earlier, but these are just the middle boards. None of these include any lights. And so it made the entire insulation process super, super easy. You can see here that we did cut around the, the fan to make room for the fan so that there is a hole. That again was another one that was easier than we were expecting. So all in all, the ceiling kind of went off without a hitch. So we were very pleasantly surprised. So it's 4.45. When did we start working, like 10.30? Yes, it's been quite a long time and I'm pretty happy with the progress. We did find another leak in the roof, which kind of set us back a bit, but that's okay. Better find it now than later. But here we have the roof or ceiling going across. It looks extremely clean. And the next step is going to be continuing this and also having HP install the puck lights, which you have a puck light right there. Which is super simple. And I don't know where the bit is, but all you have to do is just take a hole saw and drill a hole. And these are the easiest things to install because they go this way. You just gotta feed the wires through. And then you push these little bad boys up and then whenever they go in there, they hold themselves in. So if we ever have to change these out, we can quite literally just pull them out. But the hard part is making sure that we don't use too much wire. So we're definitely gonna have to start positioning them first and then run our wire across. Be really easy to install since we already have our switches right behind you wired up. See? So with that, we're gonna call it a day today. We're probably gonna not work on this tomorrow, I don't think, mm -hmm. that we will go to Home Depot tomorrow and then we will resume on Monday. So we will see you on Monday. So things are not going according to plan. So it's Monday, it's 10 o'clock in the morning and we have a leak up here. Now, we knew that this leak was here. We thought it was coming from one spot, but it is not coming from the spot we thought it was coming from which is not good. So we got to figure out where that leak is coming from. The reason is, is of course, because if there's a water leak and the water leak isn't resolved, then it could get into the insulation, it could get onto the plank, it could cause mold. It just causes a bunch of issues. Now we thought we knew where this leak was coming from, but it turns out it is actually coming from the fan. Now we believe that it's coming from just not properly sealing the fan. So we're hoping that if we uninstall the fan and then we re-silicone everything, it will be good to go. And so I'm going to go and I'm going to do that right now. HP is currently dealing with a Turo car, so I'm going to try to handle this solo. That way later today we can finish the ceiling or at least get close to finishing the ceiling. Well, I got the fan off and uh, I found a bunch of holes that aren't sealed right. Let me see. 
So I've been picking out all the glue out of these little spots uh, and you can tell that when some of the screws are screwed in there's some rust like water was sitting in there so I think there's some water getting in. I can see some areas when I push down water is kind of poking out of some areas so I'm trying to peel off all of the existing uh, all of the existing glue or sealant that's on there and I think we should just reseal this entire thing. I mean there's no point in trying to keep building glue on top of glue. So. 100% agree. Yeah. So since we couldn't finish the ceiling in this video, instead we're going to move on to finishing the bike rack. Now we're adding some extra structural support to the bike rack so that the side railings just have more wood to screw into so that we make sure there's no flexing, there's no bending, everything is super structurally sound. The board in the rack is, is quite heavy, and whenever we add our bikes onto that, there is quite a lot of weight that these rails are having to support. They do support up to 700 pounds, and so I don't see it being an issue, but we just wanted to be on the side of caution as we didn't want to create any issues in the future. We wanted it to be able to withstand the abuse of pulling it in and out. Here you can see us test fitting it in the garage. It is a bit bigger than what we were expecting, but it, it's able to fit our gear and our bikes really comfortably. We didn't want to have to feel like we were solving a puzzle every time we got our bikes into the garage. And so that's why we opted for something a little bit on the larger side. And here you can see HP securing everything to the floor of the van, to the structure of the van. That way everything is secured and everything is good to go. All right, HP. So what did we just finish? The garage, the bike racks at least, in the garage, which has been a huge project. This was Aubrey's brainchild here and getting this to fit. The only downside is that we're not left with a lot of room like we originally intended, but we've got a lot of freaking but room. The lack of room isn't any has doesn't have anything to do with the design has to do with our expectations of how like how much space the bike rack would take but realistically we can't take any space away from any of this stuff and this is 100 percent homemade you know and this is something that would cost i think a lot of money i think i've seen them upwards like 800 dollars for these systems already made and we made ours for it's not perfect but it's pretty damn good okay HP, good. you want to demonstrate it all right so walking on up just got done driving 500 miles it locks into place just like that. Can't move it. It's actually very sturdy and then we can unhitch our bikes once we're done. The only thing is for larger bikes like HP's bike, you yeah. do have to take out the seat, which isn't a huge deal, but we just, yeah. there was no real way around that. I mean, technically we could notch out that front support to clear an inch of room, but you know, truthfully, when you're mountain biking, you change your seat position quite a lot, especially if you're going off of big bumps or big jumps and stuff like that. So I think that's kind of, something that is fine. I mean, it's not like it has to be custom tailored every single time you take it out, right? And then we close it up. And they're locked. With that being said, you guys, I know that we didn't get 100% of what we wanted to get done this week, but we've made some pretty significant progress and I am excited about it. So we have a lot more to come in the coming weeks, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Like always, you guys, we appreciate you checking out this video, so make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and we will see you guys in the next video.